Hello to the beautiful people, this is Dash with a look at character creation in Destiny. So if you're looking to play Destiny, the first thing that you're going to be confronted with is choose your class on the screen. You're going to want to pick a class and this does define your role in the game somewhat. Well, it's, it's pretty important, so we'll go through these. The Titan, if you want to think about them as archetypes or archetypes, this is the tank. The Hunter being the Rogue, and the Warlock being the Mage with his little blue ball in his hand, obviously, Spellcaster, so there's spells and guns. And uh, first up, with the Titan, now you can choose, uh, basically it's a heavy armoured, tanky kind of guy, and you're an armoured engine of war, control any battle with strength and strategy, that's basically what it says. So the Striker is the subclass and that you can choose, and obviously the Defender as well. Now the Striker, you can smash the ground and dissolve enemies in a maelstrom of arc light, so that's going to be very powerful, a lot of deeps behind it. The Defender is more so tanky, shape void of light into an indestructible shield to protect you and your allies from harm, so obviously in a group, you're going to want the defender on your team up front getting close and personal and uh, obviously you can see his little hand crackling with the fist because they do have the ability to punch shit. I believe it's the striker not the defender so that's that's pretty cool so you're gonna want strength because that this game does have attributes as well so they're gonna play into it too. The hunter itself, you're a master of the frontier. Stalk and kill your enemies with ruthless precision. So obviously that's more of the, the roguish, kind of stealthy role. The Gunslinger summons a flaming pistol which disintegrates enemies with solar light. So it's like the one shot. I think you get three shots to start with and it has a timer, which is pretty cool. So that's uh, it's all deeps. The Blade Dancer, charge your blade with arc light and consume your foes with lightning. So that'll be more, I don't know if you can see, if we can turn this guy around. No, but they're holding a blade in their left hand. So they're all about the blade over the pistol, getting up close and personal. Now the Warlock, obviously they're going to have the, the lighter armor. I don't know if I touched on this. The Hunter will have the medium armor and be faster. The Warlock will have the lighter armor. Um, and they are going to have some powerful spells. Now the universe bends to your will. Manipulate its energies to annihilate your foes. The Void Walker hurls an explosive bolt of void light at the enemy, disintegrating those caught within the blast. This is a this is a glass cannon, right? So it has lower defense, a lot of attack power, and uh, you're going to be able to really do some damage. The Sun Singer, on the other hand, fill yourself with solar light, dramatically increasing the effectiveness of your abilities. From my understanding, personally, they're the aid to the group. I believe they do have a heal, so they're going to be the ones that are in the support role versus offensive which is Voidwalker. So for now we're just going to pick the Titan. Why not? Doesn't really matter. The only thing that it's going to change in this screen and this is what we're looking at is obviously the armor itself. So there's three races that we shall go over and I guess we'll do the backstory first and then look at the different features. So the humans are the standard humans. You're a hardy human, hardy and adaptable. I already said hardy. Your ancestors rose from earth to build an age of miracles. So this is post apocalyptic humans you me anybody and we've survived a big bad war so they are going to look like probably good i click on them male or female again we'll go through each of the uh their distinct customization abilities and options i should say the awoken you're awoken marked by the cosmos your ancestors took shelter in deep space and it changed them forever what actually happened is that big ball that you see and everything called the traveler was battling the darkness in the first time that happened, basically some humans got caught up. Some got disintegrated, killed, evaporated, whatever. Some of them were changed by it and they became the Awoken. They were touched or tainted by the darkness. Why they turned white instead of black, I do not know. But it basically makes their eyes white. They got this kind of weird look about them like they're looking in a pool of water and it's reflecting on the skin. I don't know if you can see that animation up close, but it's there and it kind of flows over them. It's very mystical looking. And that's what the females look like. They've got more of an elvish, angular, um, softer look about them, I guess, with their, their features. Now, the Exo, you're an Exo, a self-aware war machine built for a long forgotten struggle. Basically, they had their own agenda, were reprogrammed, and now they're working for the good guys. This one looks like a Giver system. That, that looks insane. So we'll go back through the mail and look through customization. 
You can pick from up to seven faces. They've only got casts. They do not have individual customization options for the eyes, eyebrows, nose, forehead, what have you. This is it. But as your helmet's on a lot of the time, I guess this is still a lot of co uh, customization. You got your lip color, your eye color, your skin color. I'm gonna change that skin color because it looks kind of like he's sunburnt. The hair, post-apocalyptic is definitely it. Whenever they do post-apocalyptic stuff, and I've said that word a lot, they go for these funky things. There's no sideburns. They always shave the side of the head or they, they throw in a little bit of 70s as well, but a lot of it's kind of cyberpunk inspired there was some feathered stuff that is just one for the guinness books but a lot of funky haircuts nothing that you'd see walking down the street well i assume i mean sure there is some but they when they try and get that inspired post-apocalyptic you can really feel it some facial markings and i'm sure there's going to be more face casts facial markings and haircuts down the line i mean you can see that happening in some dlc why not i mean Eight is not a lot for the facial markings. You can change the color of each, and I should go back. You can change the hair color. It's got the whole spectrum. So just looking at the human females, uh, obviously they're going to have a little bit more of a petite faces. Uh, these are just, again, the same kind of casts. I do need to make a note of the fact that choosing any race is not going to influence anything. It doesn't change your attributes whatsoever. That's all in your class and, and whatever path you're gonna take, but realistically, these are all aesthetic based or I guess lore as well if you get really deep into that but you've got your standard skin color lip color and eye color I assume I don't know if the the guys had the same lip colors as well but uh, they might the females may have a little bit brighter now the hair is uh, different it's obviously more feminine longer still got that cyber futuristic I don't know steampunk but all of these kind of things are great words to, to uh, I guess, describe what's going on here. Except for Harlequin here, if you put her as blonde. Maybe. I don't know. If she says Mr. J, it may work. And the markings, have only got a handful of them, but they are, again, they, they stand out. Especially if, if you really want to go hard with these, I mean, you can. That is pretty atrocious, though, I would not recommend. But that's the basic female human the awoken again this it's it's hard to make customization too much different with these guys because they're all about looking softer but they have done it pretty well with the facial the casts i mean that guy had a pretty blocky head but this dude's got a very almost feminine uh soft face the skin color the hues are all in the the bluish purpley kind of weird range their lip color, they've got different colors again, but it, it, a lot of it, the blues and the purple hues are coming out and the eye color obviously pops a lot more. They've got much, I don't know, I think they're much brighter. They've got a glow behind it. Now, you can put hair on them. I guess the randomization didn't show them with hair at the start. Again, it's gonna have pretty much similar haircuts. I don't know if these are exactly the same, but they look pretty much spot on. Um, for the other races, but these guys do still look very much otherworldly. Their ha hair colors are <laughs> very bright, and uh, I mean, this blue steel shows up a lot on his face, especially with those eyes popping. Uh, and then again, you have the markings. Um, I think it's got one or two different, but uh, obviously this is this is almost like a cat-like looking one. But they've got their own little markings as well. And we can look at the females now. They look even i guess she looks even softer there's there's a lot going on with her face so it looks a lot different but they're very very petite uh compared to the humans very petite uh almost innocent looking i think that's a good good descriptive word for that the bluish hues for the skin color and the lip color again they look pretty much the same and the eye color wow that is a bright green We've got all the different hair colors. They too have that wash that goes over them, that effect that's running over their face. And I mean, these hair options are insane. I don't think I can do two blue steels. Maybe we'll go for white. Ew. And there's that bush that's sitting on top of her head. That's insane. Well, this is a cool haircut. That's actually really badass. So they're very alien. Now, now I feel the alien vibe happening with the green and, and what's going on here. I mean, this is... Pretty insane. The markings are at, they, they do have different markings and you can see that. I mean, they're very 
similar, I guess, and I'm sure that they sh they share some, but I do have markings of their own, and they're very unique. So the next race, the last, is the EXO. Now the males are obviously going to be a little bit blockier. They're going to to be heavier because they are males. The the facial types are very very different. Um, obviously you can see like this blue almost power core that's that's behind it. They've got a very wide range of colors. They're, they're all mixed though. They don't like blend across the whole gradient. And then you've got that cool splash on the head. That looks badass. That white splash against the the blue face. That uh, that looks crazy. That you can actually instead of the mar you know normal markings, you can get like all these things. I skipped some stuff though. So there are the different facial colors. The head features are going to be like the the accessories, the horns, the plates, what have you. That's actually really cool. Oh man, he's got the busted side of his head with sparks coming out. Oh, I'm gonna make a dude called Sparky. Just, no I can't. You can't change the name by the way. That's a funny thing. Across the characters, you cannot change the name. It just goes by your account name, so... It, that, I don't know, I'm a little disappointed in that. I'm not sure if it's the same on Xbox, but PlayStation. You, uh, you have to retain the same account name across all characters. So you can't be like, Wendy Sue is a female and then Bobby Joe is a dude. Don't know if you'd really want that, but I don't judge. So the females... Softer, smaller, this kind of, uh, I don't know if this randomizes when you press the button, let's check this out. A little bit. So, I mean the facial markings changed, uh, but not really. So, the facial features of the girls are quite, wow, I mean look at that, that's a bug-eyed fiend right there. I, I guess because they don't need to show their eyes as much, that's really cool. So this is the basic females, I want to use the bug face just because. Uh, the skin colors, obviously the whole range. That is a cool metallic uh, color though, I like that. And the mouth can be changed up too, but it shows behind the plate if you can't see that. So that's actually really cool. And then the eyes, I probably ruined this by choosing the bug, but then you can choose a different eye color with a mouth color. So it's not just one power core. These are individual colors that you're looking at. The head features again, platings and horn. You're gonna see a lot of the similar stuff that we just saw before. Some of it imitates hair, a lot of it doesn't, and they're just really, I mean, come on, tell me you don't want those head horns. Um, but then you've got that cool little sparky thing which I'm gonna leave on her. The markings are a little bit different. I think we need white against here so you can see it. There's a seven, some dots, splash. Oh man, that star, they really, They've got some cool ass things. I wonder if this looks like blood. No, you can't get red. That's disappointing. You cannot get red, but it looks like paint anyway. Yeah, these markings are really cool. I hope they bring in more of them. So that's just about it for customization for characters. Uh, let me know what you think. If I've missed anything or you've made a cool combination, feel free to leave a comment below and tell me about it. Otherwise, check out destiny.gamepedia.com, which gets updated as the game does. Thank you so much for watching, and bye for now.